The corruption in New Jersey is so brazen, they actually explained it in the paper. They said Mr. Sweeney was closely aligned with George E. Norcross, an insurance executive and powerful power broker whose stranglehold on southern New Jersey politics lead many to see him as a shadow governor. Hmm. I guess if this bill passes in the New Jersey Assembly, we'll have to look a lot more into Mr. Norcross, who apparently has a stranglehold on our democracy. In terms of transitioning. You have in the past, uh, when it came to UMDNJ, the medical school in Camden, you've used the name George Norcross and you've painted him as a villain. Do you think that George, the hand of George Norcross is obvious and open here? Well, he makes it open. He puts it in the media. And, but look, I'm not a spring chicken. I've been around a long time. There are 40 state senators. I'm the fourth senior sitting tenure member in that Senate, 26 years. I'm a former investigator. I'm a former councilman. I can talk about Commerce Bank. I can talk about Kramer Hill. I can talk about Petty Island and Vision Optical and all the relationships that have taken place, um, et cetera. And so I know this is not about the enhancement of health care, the enhancement of higher education. That's the intent of those what of us in the legislature. About it's what? about George Nucross and his business relationships and continue to grow his businesses. Why? And that's fine, but be honest about it. And joining us now, one of the sponsors of the merger plan, Senator Donald Norcross. Senator, good of you to join us. Thank you. It's good to be here. Your brother issued a statement today congratulating you on, on your efforts to get this passed. Uh, George Norcross, of course, and also saying that this is, and I'm quoting now, the most important thing in Camden in 50 years. I take it you agree. Uh, certainly, I believe this is a, a huge day for Camden City, but uh, not just South Jersey, but the state of New Jersey. Why the entire state? Why, why do you, what, what does it have for the rest of the state? Because there have been many who portrayed this as an effort by, by uh, South Jersey uh, Democrats to exert some political influence and power here. Well, urban legends are begun many different ways, and this certainly has uh, started that way. Any questions for the Senate President? The state is going as a result of that. What is George Norcross's involvement as you see it? Look, I, I mean, I think there's an obvious question. I think when you have an insurance broker who is non elected, uh, drafting legislation, then lobbying for it, and he has a track record of making tens of millions of dollars off taxpayer dollars, it begs the question is why is he involved and why are people listening to him? There were two firsts at today's hearing. It was the first time the powerful South Jersey Democrat George Norcross has ever testified before a legislative panel. And it was the first time in recent memory that an activist has been dragged out of the hearing room physically by the state police. Stop it! happened after committee chairman Bob Smith ejected a whole row of spectators, pro-tax incentive and anti. Sue Altman, the activist, had hinted something like this might happen. And there's no opportunity for community voice. And so when democracy fails and when our Senate leadership here today is probably not going to ask the hard questions they should ask, when those two failures happen, people show up and they're angry and you'll probably see some disruption today. When Norcross got up to testify, the activists chanted, Take down King George. Take down King George! Take down King George! We probably should have seen it coming, and some probably did, but South Jersey power broker George Norcross was already losing a step when Amy Kennedy beat Bridget Harrison who was backed by Norcross in a Democratic congressional primary in 2020. But most people point to this. The results of Tuesday's elections are in. All votes have been fairly counted. And I, of course, accept the results. 2021, Senate President Steve Sweeney, boyhood friend and political partner, conceding to MAGA-adjacent trucker Ed Durr. Steve Sweeney had the sort of unilateral veto power to block powerful judgeships and prosecutors and, and legislation that would all benefit the South, gone. And not just the South, but his affiliates that he collaborated with in Essex County and for a time and even in Bergen County, all those uh, political affiliates of, of the Norcross South Jersey machine 
lost their great pillar. The cost has helped steer hundreds of millions of dollars to the city of Camden through EDA tax incentives, and he's proud of it. I am here today to speak for myself, not through lawyers or spokespeople, to defend Camden and to correct many misstatements, mischaracterizations, and outright mistruths that are having a serious negative impact on the revitalization of our city. Norcross said... Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today. Joining me at the podium are First Assistant Attorney General Lindsay Rotolo, Executive Director of the Office of Public Integrity and Accountability, Drew Skinner, as well as the founding and outgoing Executive Director of the Office of Public Integrity and Accountability, Tom Eicher. Along with us today are many of the members of the investigation and prosecution team responsible for the case that I'm about to discuss. We're here today to announce the unsealing of a 13-count indictment charging George Norcross with leading a criminal enterprise, of which his five co-defendants in this case, along with several unindicted co-conspirators, were allegedly members. The state alleges that defendants George Norcross, Philip Norcross, William Tambusi, the former mayor of Camden, Dana Red, Sidney Brown, and John O'Donnell committed the crime of first-degree racketeering conspiracy, among other offenses, to further the purposes of the Norcross enterprise. I want to go to trial in two weeks. We are prepared. They will delay. They will have all kinds of, of excuses of why they won't do this, because this is all about a smear campaign. What I'm also saying is there are going to be scores of people here that are going to identify and testify as to the motives of this fellow, who, when I finished listening, I said to myself, where's the beef? Where is the beef here? What did you aim to do coming today? What was the reason that you came? Because I want to witness an extraordinary embarrassment, an outrageous conduct from a government official who stands up there and tries to act like he's holier than thou. I've outlined three or four things that this guy's been involved with since he was attorney general. And there's more to come and a lot more that's going to be presented from various sources throughout this state of activities that have gone on that are improper and in some cases probably illegal that have gone on. We want, to go, we want to go to trial. Two weeks. Matt Placken, come join us. Try the case because your people don't want to try anything. You get down here and back up your words and stop it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 